Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum, and I'm here today at HK's Grey Room in Ashburn, Virginia, taking a look at some of their prototype and unusual handguns. Now this one's not quite a prototype. Well, this is a prototype, but it's a model that did actually go into production. This is the P7M10. Now the two standard versions of the P7 were the M8 and the M13, a single stack 9mm and a double stack 9mm. And they did actually try developing a 7 round single stack 45, which went nowhere. But what did go somewhere was the M10 in 40 caliber. So in the 1990s, 40 Smith & Wesson was the hot cartridge. This is what all the police departments were looking for. And it was supposed to be this combination of the capacity of a 9mm, but the stopping power of a 45. In reality, you kind of get the capacity of 45 and the stopping power of a 9mm, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, HK decided that since they were heavily promoting the P7 to the law enforcement market, that's where it had even originated as law, a law enforcement pistol for Germany, they would try to tackle the US market in 40 caliber. So the original development of this gun was done on the P7M13 frame and slide. However, there were concerns when they got through some of the development that this slide and the gas delay system wasn't quite sufficient to safely operate with the higher pressure of the 40 Smith & Wesson cartridge. And so they made a design change. Let me show you. They added a lot of mass to the slide. More mass means more inertia, means the slide is going to open slower, meaning you've got a lot more safety factor in it. Here's a standard M13, here's the M10. You can start to see it from the side view, but it's really obvious from the front. That is a dramatic change to the slide design, and uh, I think you can see right there why this wasn't uh, a successful pistol introduction. That thing just... I'll be blunt, that thing just looks really ugly. Uh, I have heard it referred to as the, uh, the elephantitis gun, or perhaps the hydroencephalitis gun. And it's more than just looks. Uh, this also substantially increased the weight of the gun. I mean, that's kind of what they were trying to do. But uh, this went from a standard M13, which empty, weighs about 30 ounces, that's 850 grams. This thing weighs 42 and a half ounces. Uh, so they've increased it like 30% in weight. That's 1.125 like kilograms for this pistol. All that weight's been added to the top. This makes for a very awkwardly balancing pistol. It's really quite top-heavy. Um, and in addition to that, one of the other really nice uh, aspects to the P7 is this very low bore axis, uh, which you really have on the M8 and the M13. And they added like a third of an inch to the sight offset. So your really nice bore axis kind of becomes a fairly typical bore axis, coupled with a very top-heavy handling pistol. So uh, these would only be available for a couple years uh, before they were, they were unceremoniously dropped from the market uh, as a result of, of legislation, but uh, that was inevitable uh, regardless of laws. This would never have survived all that long uh, on the commercial market. It does have grips that are marked P7M10, as well as having this M10 marking on the slide. Uh, note that uh, this one is serial number 7, so this is a very early uh, prototype of the gun. Not quite as early as the very first conceptual prototypes, which used uh, M13 slides. Um, and there were a lot of people in HK, especially HK USA, who argued that that gun was just fine as is. But uh, the, the engineering division back in Germany wasn't satisfied with it. Um, presumably they were concerned with the potential liability. Now we've got the P7M10 40S and W marking on the front there as well. And so they insisted on adding all of this extra mass to the slide. In every other significant way, this gun remains identical to the M13. Basically everything on the frame is the same. So it has obviously the same squeeze cocking system. It's got the same uh, behind the trigger guard lever mag release. It has a double stack magazine based on the M13 body. They did mark these magazines for 40 Smith & Wesson, um, because there are some subtle changes uh, to better fit the geometry of the 40 instead of the 9mm cartridge. The little heat shield here <coughs> on the top of the trigger guard is the same, the trigger's the same. Also, interestingly, the M10 variety actually had standard traditional uh, land and groove rifling. 
if you look carefully right at the edge of the muzzle, you can see it there. Um, and that's unusual because everything else, every other gun in the P7 series used HK's polygonal rifling. Well, not all that surprisingly, the P7 M10 was a pretty dismal seller. I don't know that they got any real law enforcement sales, and just a smattering of civilian sales. It was available, both blued and nickeled, um, but this pistol was only on the market for just a couple of years. So it was introduced, as I said, in 1991. It was actually introduced at the 1991 SHOT Show. Uh, production was discontinued in 1994 as a result of the assault weapons ban. That led to the discontinuation of the M13 in the United States, because of course it had a 13 round magazine that couldn't be uh, brought in. And because the M10 was built on that same frame, when they shut down the 13, they also shut down the 10. So there were enough in stock that this remained in HK's catalogue in 1995, uh, but by 1996 it was gone. And your only option options for a, a P7 by 96 were the P7 and the P7 M8. So these are actually a fairly rare gun to find today. They were sold on the civilian market, so they are out there and available to collectors, but not a whole lot of them. Just the look and the balance and the weight of this thing really clobbered its, its commercial viability. I think an accurate observer of the American market would have recognized right from the beginning that this would never be a successful pistol. But uh, HK went ahead and produced it and uh, made a go at it anyway. So uh, thanks to HK for letting me into the grey room to take a look at their prototype M10 here to bring to you guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.